Lewis RC. Well, I got the uh, Tower Hobby DHC2 Beaver all put together. All right, as I told you I would in the uh, unboxing assembly video, uh, or the unboxing video. Now, the assembly on this plane is not, if you've only got maybe four or five foamies under your belt, then you're going to be scratching your head on this one. Um, there are, it is more, for lack of a better term, it's like the way the foamies were 10 years ago. Um, you've got to do a lot of figuring on your own. However, the manual is very good. However, it does have one blaring mistake. And then one of the first things you do is it tells you to put on the um, main landing gear. And it says to use three um, of the M3 16 screws on each side. Okay? Now, problem with that is, is that all the screws are labeled in the bag except for the M16 screws. And, but, luckily I figured them out. They're the only screws in the kit that are black and look like wood screws. They have the flathead and they, they are um, self-tapping, okay? But they're the only black screws and you get six of them. However, as you will find later when you go to put the struts on, that this back screw here, go ahead and you can uh, secure it in there, but leave it loose because you're going to have to unscrew it in order to put on this strut. Now, the other thing is the instruction tells you, after you get the main gear on, to put, um, to secure in the um, rear wheel using two screws that in, in, indicate in a bag that is, uh, there, there's a bag of, I think it's like M3 screws, but it does show you it is the correct screws. Do not, however, do that. Do not attach this tail wheel. Don't attach the tail wheel until you do the next step, which is put in your vertical stabilizer and your, horiz or your horizontal stabilizer and your vertical stabilizer, because if you don't, when you go to, there's one screw that holds this entire assembly in. It's, just, it's the only, it's big, long, silver screw, machine screw, and it has to fit through this hole here. However, the head on it will not fit through there, so you have to, don't put this on, put your tail feathers on, then put your rear wheel assembly on. It won't affect it one way or the other, okay? Other than that, the instructions are right on. All the screws are labeled and they are all easy to find. Do not get upset that you are left with a whole bunch of screws because that all has to do with the float sets because you've got a set of three different struts or, or, or bars that all get screwed in. So it's like, like eight, one, two, three, like nine different screws. And you got screws for the rudders back there and it's just, there's a lot more to it, okay? So this little baggie here, that holds these little rubber bands and this fish wire and all that, and then all these extra screws, just combine all them and set them aside and put them somewhere where the floats, if you're not gonna put the floats on right away. The other thing you have to do is, is the top, the, the push rods, for the elevator and the rudder are actually connected in under here. So make sure that they have quick connects down in there on the rudder and the elevator servos. So you've got to make sure that those are centered and attach the servos correctly before you put the wings in because once you put the wings in, all these spars in the way, now you can't get to them. So make sure your uh, tail feathers and all that is nice and centered first. So use a servo tester or go ahead and put your receiver in or whatever. Whatever you've got to do to make sure everything's centered first before you put on the wings. And then when you go to put the wings on, you're going to have these little white tabs that are actually going to bolt in with more of those dark screws. And these little tabs are going to bolt in with the little keyed part down. 
It has a little click in place kind of ledge on it. Make sure the ledge is towards the bottom of the wing before you attach them because otherwise your wing won't fit on right. Okay? And when you're attaching the wings, one wing has a single large spar in it, the other wing has two smaller spars. Make sure they are centered in their, the opposing holes and don't try to force them in. And at the same time, you're trying to fish these two pieces of wire like I showed you in the unboxing through this quick connect. So just undo the screw as far as you can, go ahead and get them lined up and lock everything in place. Now, you're not going to hear that net necessary click. It may click, it may not click, but the wings, will, you can tell that they're in. However, that's why the struts are absolutely necessary because they are functional. They're what holds the wings in place along with them locking pins. In order to remove the wings, you'd have to unscrew them, press in on each one of them pins, undo your quick connect for your, your flaps, and then slide the wing out. There are no screws that screw in to hold your wing in place like what you're probably used to. The light, uh, you're going to have one lead that has three, three sections to it that all your lights plug into, and that plugs into an empty port on your receiver. So you're going to need at least a six channel receiver because you're going to have flaps and you're going to have those lights, okay? And so you're going to, you're going to need the, the extra channels. Now, if you had a four channel receiver, you couldn't use your flaps and your lights could be plugged into your bind port for power, but this requires at least a six channel because of the flaps. The, the prop was balanced. The ESC was calibrated. I got, uh, let's put, you know, I, yes, I know I got the prop on, but I have immediate thrust response. Prop secured. Prop secured. Um, the CG on the plane is 61 to 50, 54 millimeters back from the leading edge. You can see my black marks on either side there. Um, that's the CG. And let me put the little hatch back on. Because of these, the way the landing gear is, the way these struts are, I can't use my CG machine. So I'll put my fingers right there on the right in between that and just the tips of my fingers and she balances just perfectly right there. So that's, honestly, there's only one place you can put the battery. So CG really, I mean, is, is an issue, but you only got one place to put the battery. It only slides in one way. So you really aren't going to be able to do much in the way of changing the CG, but it's spot on if you use a 2200 to a 2700. The, the 2700 just slides right in. They give you some Velcro. It has um, EC3 connector. This battery is an XT60, so I put an adapter on it. But you can see the cavern is in there. And you just slide that battery down in there. It only goes one way. Okay? You really don't need the Velcro, and I'll tell you why you don't need the Velcro. Because that little dam on the end of the battery hatch. You put that, put your battery in there, make sure your wires are tucked out of the way, okay? Well, so they're not gonna bind. And that dam will hold that battery in place. And that gives you perfect CG, okay? Um, I'm running 30% Expo all the way around with 100% on the travels. As far as radio setup goes, I'm using an AR620 antennaless receiver. Let me just show you what 100% throws with 30% Expo looks like. Here's the ailerons, um, elevator, and rudder. Now, one thing you need to do. And this is important because this bird is famous for not having enough elevator authority. So in order to com combat that, go in here to your servo setup screen and go to travel 
okay, and then go down to elevator and change that to 150. And that will give you plenty of elevator throw. Okay, that's really the only peculiar thing about this as far as um, radio setup. You, you need to have plenty of throttle, need another, uh, extra elevator. To put these little winglet things on, you're given two tiny little screws which are labeled. You have to turn the elevator all the way up and that will reveal, let me see if I can do this when it's attached. Um, I don't know if you can see in there. See there's a screw there? That's kind of, watch the elevator. Now watch when it moves out of the way. See that little hole there? There's actually another hole behind it. So what you do is you turn that, hold the elevator up, reveal those two screws, slide this uh, weather, this vein in, and then you screw that in with two tiny little flathead screws and they fit flush. The plane has lights all over it. Uh, has a tail light here and a nav light here and both those are flashing. On the end you have the green and then the flashing white light. And then on the other wing, on the, oh, on the other end, you have the same, the red and the flashing, and then you have the white nav light there. Um, once you get through all the peculiarities of putting the model together, um, you're given a very good looking model. Um, she is not going to be a speed demon, but this is a scale flying plane. She's not meant to be a speed demon. Um, I predict a very slow roll rate and uh, um, not a very aerobatic plane. This is going to be more of a scale flying plane. She looks good. She's probably going to fly very stable. And so the next time you see this plane with me, it'll be in the air. I'm going to fly her. And uh, for obvious reasons. There's no glue needed for any of the assembly. Just remember again. Make sure you have your elevator and your rudder locked in to their servos. You'll see the push rod, you'll see quick connects, you slide them through the push rod, you'll have to use a needle nose and a, and a flathead to fish it through there and anchor it down. Make sure you've got them nice and uh, locked in before you put on your wings. Otherwise, you're going to take your wings right back off again and putting these wings on and off, I ain't going to lie, is a pain. Okay? Um, 2200, yes, but I would get try to get as bigger bigger than 2200, like a 27 or a 3000 brick style. Slide that in. You only got one place you can put it, and uh, she CGs fine. Um, the prop, like I say, the prop was um, already balanced. And do not put the tail wheel on until you have your elevator and rudder installed. Otherwise, you're going to be screaming. Mimi's at yourself for, for having to take it back off. So so don't follow the instructions in that. And remember, the, the screws that hold in the landing gear are like M16s. They are not labeled. They're the only screws that aren't labeled in the kit. And uh, they come in a little bag, and you are going to have a lot of screws left over. Don't let that bother you. That's for the float kit. So. All right, well, that's pretty much all the peculiarities about the assembly. It is a little more involved than your average uh, foamy. Uh, so if you're, this is, this is more, if you want to call putting education levels to foamies, uh, putting them together, this would be the advanced. This would be an advanced foamy, okay? Uh, but if you're, if you're first time putting it together, be slow, use reasoning, you know, don't get in a hurry, and just make sure you have a nice big swear jar ready. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, I think I'm going to be rewarded with a very great flying plane. And, um, oh, by the way, I did install an AR620. I didn't know if I showed you. Where you put the battery in is the AR620. There's a little shelf there that actually got some Velcro and a two-sided tape there for you for your receiver and then on the opposite side is where they have the 40 amp tower hobbies um, ESC 
So there you go. Good, good looking plane. I'm thinking she's going to fly as well as she looks. I'm not expecting a rocket ship. I'm expecting a good looking scale flyer. All right, folks. Well, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and then big beavers. Bye-bye.